I think we're back. Back cool. with Mike and so. Wes. Hello, everyone. The <laughs> hey. seems to be okay. Sorry if the audio made your ears bleed. <laughs> so we were actually talking about uh, the new Marketplace content releases, and we have a... I don't know how to say that, the, te the, the tutorial that's up there. Oh, oh yeah. Sally, we have I'm sorry. Could you put that up on the screen? Algorithmic uh, created oh, okay. an awesome uh, tutorial that shows off the new Substance plugin that was released last month for UB4. Uh, a few streams ago, I think it was the one before last, we had the Algorithmic guys here on site, and they did an awesome demo that showed off Algorithmic Painter. A lot of great responses and to that one, too. Yeah, Algorithmic Painter is amazing. Uh, and also the Algorithmic plugin uh, in UB4 that you can get from their website right now. Um, anyways, so uh, they already have a sample on there that you can download for free, and there's now a new one uh, uh, called Ginoid that you can grab. Um, and then we also have some cool um, architectural viz samples. Cool lot on the forums, you guys, if you're on the forums, you've seen, he's done some amazing yes. architectural mm -hmm. stuff. And we're seeing like an awesome community just sprung up around <laughs> architectural visualization in UE4. And uh, every time something comes out, like we all... We have, have one in the showcase today, too. So. Oh, cool. awesome. Yep. So every time one comes out, we share it around the, the whole office, and we get really excited about seeing what people are doing. It's Let's pretty it amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's up. like it's one, totally. once a week we get one, and we're like... <laughs> Yep. yep. This is Unreal Engine? Wow. It's so, yeah. amazing. So as always, new content on the Marketplace, check it out. It should be on there now, and it should be annotated, so you'll find it as soon as you log in. Um, cool. So um, stuff. I guess back to us for a second, Shelley. <clears throat> cool. Okay, so I'm going to jump right in then. Uh, Do we want to oh, show the... Oh, um, yeah, right. The, we, yeah, the archivists that we have. Oh, right. Okay, so we have actually um, two community things to show here. Now, this one's a, a ship interior. Cool. This was done by... By Joe. Mm-hmm. It's kind of another awesome sci-fi architectural cool. of, of this thing. I don't know if I can make this bigger. Just there you go. Very cool. Yep, cool. And he has a blog that you can check out. It's very See clear. more of that. And there should be another link up there for another architectural vision piece. Oh, cool. Wow, I haven't seen this one. Yeah, this Amazing. is beautiful. I was looking, watching this this afternoon, and it's just absolutely beautiful. Oh, wow. And I want to live here. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was just going to say you stole my life. <laughs> Man, this stuff just keeps coming, right? Yeah. I, whoever did this, I want you to design my next apartment Seriously. for me. Seriously. So nice. It's gorgeous. Yep, very cool. So virtual surrealism. Very cool. Nice. Very nice. Okay. So that's our community <laughs> showcase, I guess, yes, for this week. Yes, that's it for this week. Okay. <laughs> sure cool. Sweet. All right. So back and to us for a sec. And you're going to talk 4.5? Yes. Uh, I'm super excited about this one. So for Unreal Engine 4.5, this is kind of a longer... Um, Usually we're on kind of the one month cadence and we took a little bit more time for this one just to kind of see how this worked for, you know, what we could squeeze in and also... Um, we really had a lot of cool things we wanted to get in this build. Um, we had a big initiative internally on improving usability and adding features for really good um, introduction to the tools. Not all of this stuff is finished yet. Um, some of it will be appearing in 4.6 as well, but uh, you'll see, and I'll talk about it and show some of the things uh, very soon, just a lot of like things to make the editor easier, um, to improve our documentation quality, uh, uh, make our tutorial system uh, quite a bit nicer, um, and just kind of take some rough edges, just rather than going and throwing in more new tools, just going in and taking the rough edges off existing tools. So a big push for that was part of 4.5, along with just crap loads of tons of other <laughs> new things, and we'll talk about those too. Uh, lots um, of things that make you guys work long hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so uh, lots of cool, fun things to the show there. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go right in and talk about what's coming in 4.5. Uh, you can expect to see uh, the preview of 4.5 out maybe as early as today. If it's not if it's not on GitHub now, um, it will be very soon. Um, and we'll, we'll be releasing the preview release notes, which will show uh, in a lot more graphical detail um, a lot of the cool things that I'm talking about right now. But I kind of just wanted to go over it anyway, just so you can kind of, I can convey my enthusiasm for some of these awesome <laughs> things, because our team has worked really hard on this stuff, and it's coming along, and it's getting really cool. Um, okay, so uh, the first thing I want to talk about was Unreal Motion Graphics. So for 4.5, um, Unreal Motion Graphics is no longer an experimental feature. It's a full uh, UI editor that's available cool. for everyone to use out of the box, and it's now officially supported. Um, so um, the guys worked really hard 
to get it to an experimental level, and we had a lot of people on the forums testing it, a lot of uh, uh, subscribers testing it, um, and we took all the feedback. Uh, we fixed as much as we could. We added all the f a lot of the features that you guys need it. I'll talk about some of the details. So for 4.5, we now have DPI scaling, so that's basically resolution-independent UI, which is really important if you're making games for all sorts of different devices. We have uh, render transform support. This means you can take any UI widget and scale, rotate, translate independently. In fact, like you can even scale things so that they go outside of the bounding box of their parent. Um, so you're, there's really no restrictions on how you can position and animate uh, a widget now, where before kind of, it had to kind of fit within its parent and it was nested very statically. Now you can just go and animate transitions um, and, and you don't have to worry about kind of their uh, spatial uh, restrictions on spatial location. We also added grid snapping support so you can uh, add nice clean UI if you're <laughs> OCD like me. I'm super, yeah, <laughs> gotta have grid snapping. Um, ubiquitous grid snapping through the editor. Uh, you can have multiple animations. So animation support was kind of rudimentary in 4.4 and in 4.5 UMG has really cool animation support. Um, you can have multiple animations. Uh, the actual track editor has been fixed up. We've added some polish and suggestions from users on the forms. Um, so that's gotten a lot better. The styling system has been pretty much completely overhauled. You can have styles now that are inlined right inside the UI editor. You don't have to go and make separate style assets every time. Uh, so uh, that's that workflow has just been streamlined. Um, and another cool thing that we added uh, that I can't wait to show you guys, I think probably next week we'll be able to show it better, uh, but um, you can edit keyframes straight inside the details panel. So you can select a property uh, inside the details panel and just drop keys right in the timeline right there as you're changing values. You don't have to go uh, back to the back and forth, back and forth to the, uh, the widget viewport. So I think that's, that's really cool too. Just nice streamlined workflows for UI. So we're excited that 4.5 will be the first version with this feature just fully enabled, um, uh, but it's not going to stop. We're going to work on it for months and months and months and get it uh, super awesome. But like we're using it now, and we want you guys to use it, use it now. It's totally ready to start using, um, and we're really excited. We look forward to you guys getting more feedback from you. So that's the UMG update. <coughs> okay. Uh, next thing is hot reload, uh, or what we call the, what was called the compile button on the editor's toolbar. So this is C++ iteration, which every time I'm on here, I talk about how uh, this is a passion project of mine. It's something I care very much about uh, getting this experience really good. So in 4.5, uh, we've really made some great changes to uh, hot reload. Um, uh, our core team has it's set up now such that you can make C++ changes to your project pretty much any kind of change that you would like to made, make and make those changes in Visual Studio or Xcode um, and compile them normally like you normally would with your workflow. And as soon as those changes uh, finish, the editor will update automatically. So you don't have to shut down the editor anymore while working on your project. You can keep it open uh, the whole time if you want. Um, uh, so that's really cool because uh, you no longer have that whole let's wait for the editor to reload after I'm iterating on tweaking some co cool little polish thing in my game. And in fact, like, there's not really any restrictions on what you can do with the code um, while the editor is open now. You can add whole new uh, classes to your project. You can add properties, remove properties, change defaults for things, add new functions. Um, I was telling the guys here, like on a weekend project one time, I basically made a entire, an entire top-down shooter game just without even restarting the editor uh, <laughs> Well, the only times to restart it was when my own code didn't do what I, it needed to do, but uh, the, the engine totally cool. uh, supports just working and working and working uh, with the editor open now. So this is a really cool feature that I'm excited about. Um, another kind of part of that uh, that we're still working on, it won't be ready for 4.5, but there is an experimental feature that you can use for 4.5 that lets you have really fast iteration times with C++. Um, basically, you don't have to wait as long for the Unreal build tool process to start up and sort of scan for differences. So um, that's not, that will be for officially released in a, a, a feature version, but for 4.5 it will be there in experimental form, and in the release notes we'll show you how you can help test it. Um, but the whole idea is that I want, as soon as you make a change to C++, you can get that into the editor as fast as possible. Super, super fast. I care a whole lot about that. So um, we're getting there, and every build we're trying to get closer and closer. So we have a, a cool feature coming that should make it much faster. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, so we're going to switch to the screen for the next part, Shelly, if you don't mind. Um, and I'm just going to talk about some of the cool learning features we have in uh, 4.5. And like I said, some of this stuff is not finished yet. Um, we're, some of it's coming kind of hot as we finish up 4.5. And uh, again, some of these features will be 4.6. Uh, so the first thing is kind of like what we call internally super search. But 
uh, up here, you remember we had a console box where you could type kind of advanced console commands. Well, we got rid of that. The console now is accessible by pressing the tilde key uh, anywhere, so you can bring up a console box uh, and type this in any slate window. So any window of the editor, you can pop up a console and use it just like you would in game. So uh, now that we've evicted the console to this kind of floaty thing, we repurposed the box up here for searching. Uh, so you can search for anything up here. I'll just search for like blueprint. And what will happen is it will pop up just help resources. So you'll see tutorials, documentation, wiki. And if you click on these, it'll take you online to the appropriate place. Uh, so the idea here is that we'll surface um, awesome tutorials, basically any resources that we have that we can find. And in the future, we want to extend this so that you know maybe you know you guys can even contribute to this directly and just put resources out there that can be discovered directly from the editor. So it's just something that that kind of helps you get to things. If you get stuck, we don't want you to get stuck. But if you get stuck, get to things faster without having to go um, uh, and just you know, resort to Googling around uh, or posting on forums every time. So that's super search. Uh, the next thing. liking super search. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. It's going to be cool. We have a lot of really cool ideas. I mean, ideally, we want that to be, able to, be able to be able to take you to anywhere in the editor. Anything that you need to do in the editor, you can get to that. So it's just kind of a one stop shop. Um, the next thing is we've redesigned how you create projects. So when you make a new project, uh, it barely fits on the screen here because I'm on kind of a smaller screen, but you get the idea. Um, we have kind of a new uh, project creation window, and you have like thumbnail previews, and you can kind of see uh, some new template projects here that we have that are coming soon. Um, and you also can choose now, um, uh, this UI is still a work in progress, but uh, you can see choose whether you're making a desktop or console game, or like a mobile tablet game, whether you're going for maximum quality, like just you know graphics card destroying quality, or if you're making a game that's more focused on 2D or something scalable that you would run cross-platform. Uh, so give, give me, we thought giving you these options up front would make it uh, would allow us to tailor the initial settings of the project uh, so that um, you'll be able to uh, get started right off the ground with something that you can say if it's a mobile project deploy to device or if it's a 2D game you can share with someone who has a low-end computer and it runs quite well uh, uh, off the bat. Because the truth is um, UV4 has a wealth of scalability settings and you can actually get it running really well on on just about anything, um, but some configuration is required. So our goal for this release and the next release is to make it really easy for you to target your project to any type of uh, device that you want, and we'll help you through all the settings. So this is the first part of that, and there's going to be a whole lot more of stuff to come. Uh, and of course, you can toggle whether or not you want the starter content included. So that's the kind of new project awesome. UI, and we'll probably change some more, more things in there over the next few versions. Um, okay. Next thing, I'm super excited about this one. Again, we're in the learning stuff. So now, uh, you guys remember the tutorial system in UE4. Uh, it was kind of our first pass at a tutorial system, and I was really happy that we were able to get a tutorial system in for our first version, uh, so that um, by the time we, when we launched in March, you had at least some basic on onboarding, getting used to it, where do I go from here? But we've gotten a lot of feedback about it, and you know, one of the things that I've always hated about it is just like pop-ups everywhere, right? You open a material editor, if you never use like pop-up, <laughs> pop-ups just like, and I don't know if anyone's like me, but I kind of <coughs> am, am I want to rage close things that pop up because <laughs> button through them really quickly too. Like, yeah, it's just like I wanted to see what was behind it before. Let me let me see where I, you yeah. know. Let me get my bearings right. So. Um, we threw around a lot of ideas, and we still like tutorials. We want to guide people to tutorials. So the idea we came up with is when you bring up the editor now, you'll see kind of like a beacon thing. I can't show it now because um, we've already used the tutorial system here, but uh, I can show you. Actually, I can I can load up a material and show you. Uh, that's the easiest way. I think that it should appear in here. Um, so you can see. Uh, kind of like a little beacon. So this just shows you that we have a tutorial for this. So any editor. Uh, any sub-editor within, the, uh, the, within UV4 that you haven't really um, uh, looked at the tutorial content for yet, um, you'll see this little beacon, and if you click on it, it'll go away. From, like, so you don't have to worry about this annoying you. Um, but uh, it, if you want a tutorial for any specific subsystem, you can always click this button, and it'll give you a tutorial. And this uses our new tutorial system, which is a lot less pop-up-y and kind of boring than the old <laughs> tutorial. Really awesome. It will take you through um, uh, bits of the editor, and it will guide you through kind of like contextually uh, uh, with what to do and how to get started. And we're going to have a lot more tutorials too. In fact, like we've taken the whole tutorial system and we've made the tutorial system completely data-driven. So you can create your own tutorials now. They're just blueprints and you can create them. You can, you can um, uh, share them with other users. You'll be able to put them on the marketplace. And you're, you'll be able to include tutorials as assets with, with any project or any content that you make. So if you made an asset or a feature that you want to share with someone, you can go ahead and um, uh, include a tutorial asset with it. Uh, you can even configure it to be visible when you open a certain map. Um, 
so that you have some instructional content that you can include with your asset. So it was important to us that anyone can make tutorials and we just thought it would benefit the whole community if when people are adding features and adding assets and adding cool plugins, um, they can also go and have like kind of this, these cool tutorial features with it. Um, so uh, that's the new tutorial system. It can do a whole lot of stuff. I'm not gonna go into too many details, but um, it's a lot more flexible than the old one. And in 4.5, we've converted all the old tutorials to the new system. And we've even added some uh, new tutorials that we didn't have before. Um, the foliage tool, I believe, now has a tutorial uh, built in. Um, the landscape tool has landscape. a tutorial, yep. Um, and another cool thing I'll show you too is we have uh, a tutorial browser. So after you've completed tutorials, you can, um, you can bring up this guy, and this will show you all the tutorials we have available in one sort of one place. And if you've added your own tutorials and the editor found them, um, uh, you'll be able to discover these here too. <coughs> so it lets you see kind of like, oh, you know, I can do a 2D tutorial. Uh, so definitely some cool stuff happening there. Um, cool. That's the tutorial stuff. Um, I want to highlight another learning thing. Maybe this is going a little. I'm going to go faster. I feel like I'm. You're not yeah, going you're fast enough. I know okay. I'm talking fast, but you're like, fine. there's it's so much in 4.5. There's, there's just everybody so much. Everybody's fascinated, so you're good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so get a great response over here. Got to got to haul through this. Stuff. There's so much stuff. Okay, so um, we have inline doc links now. So we have this, again more help resources. Things will bring you to the help if you need them. Uh, you can click on these. It'll take you straight to the doc page. Uh, you can be in say. Um, go back to the material editor, and I could be looking at a material node, and what this is, I have whole control and all, I can get documentation on this exact material node. So I can see what these are now. I don't have to guess, I don't have to kind of learn. Some of the material nodes admittedly are a little bit obtuse. Uh, that's something we're, we're working on. <laughs> Basically, it's designed for a shader programmer, uh, it's, which is fine because you are a shader programmer if you're working in here, but we want it to be a little more accessible to everyone. Uh, so this is something that we're working on. Uh, so and. Definitely, as you're using the editor, there's a lot of just adding more and more rich tooltips all the yes. time. These kind of big tooltips. Mm -hmm. So uh, keep an eye out for them. If there's not one there now, it's kind of on our hit list. Usually, we'll go and find them. And anywhere that we see that people are struggling with learning, we want to go back and make sure there's even more documentation pages and inline learning resources. Um, gosh, okay. Um, we have other learning stuff. I'm not going to show it, but we have the ability to have documentation inline right in the 3D world. So more of our samples will have these things called documentation actors that basically will like be like a little beacon in the 3D world that you'll be able to click on, and it will bring you to a doc page uh, or maybe inline to have a balloon that tells you uh, something about that feature. And then we've also taken our C++ API documentation, and we're giving that kind of a reboot. It's, it was already pretty okay, but uh, we're trying to do a pass on it and making sure that the most useful stuff is trickled to the top and uh, just generally a much, like just a nice polished pass to it so that you can find uh, C++ API functions more easily. Kind of, we're kind of bearing away the more advanced stuff, make, surfacing the things that we expect developers to use the most, or at least the public APIs that, uh, um, what we consider our gameplay framework APIs. Uh, so C++, C++ API documentation is going to get better. That will just kind of happen over the next build. Okay, um, new level features. Okay, back to the editor. Uh, I want to show this because I think this is pretty cool. But basically, uh, levels are now in the content browser. So if, I don't know why. So in this I'm in kind of a, a strange uh, version of the build here, but um, you can now see levels in content browser. So any maps inside your project, uh, you don't have to go and file open map. In fact, the whole file open map process or open level process is now a special picker that's really just kind of like a little content Fun. browser. Mm -hmm. uh, so all your maps appear in here and you can just double click to load them up and you can even do like operations on them similar to, the, to you would for other assets, right? Like you can go and rename them, you can copy them, you can do a lot of things. That, so basically the way to think of it is maps are just kind of like assets like anything else in your project. They're a little special, um, but uh, at least it's all visible in one spot. And I mean, our goal is to get everything that is kind of part of your project available, free to see in Content Browser. And we're kind of almost there. There's a few things that are a little bit, um, uh, uh, you know, like one example is kind of like define your level blueprint, the level blueprints up mm -hmm. in the blueprints tab. So that's something that we're going to look at. Probably we'll be moving level blueprint over to the scene outliner. We'll probably also be moving world settings, uh, which is now right here over to the scene outliner. So there's kind of cool like little editor changes so that we don't want you to go searching all over the editor to find all the stuff for your project. We want it all kind of like, it's either in the map that you're looking at, it's in an asset that you're editing, or it's in the content browser. So it's just improvements that we're, we're doing based off your feedback. Um, other improvements to the editor. Uh, so we've uh, greatly improved the FBX import UI. I can't show it easily because I don't have an FBX file handy, but basically um, when you import FBX now, it will automatically detect um, that 
you have either an animation, a skeletal mesh, a static mesh, uh, it will figure out what you want and to only show the UI that's really pertinent to kind of the asset that you're yeah. importing rather than just like, here's boom, everything. like here's like a crap <laughs> yeah. load of properties and like, so we're streamlining that whole process so um, there's really little room for error and as always, like every build, we try to make the FBX importer more resilient to different file formats. We get a lot of requests for better Blender support and we're yep. working mm -hmm. on that. Uh, that's something that we're super interested in, especially on the animation side. So just keep churning away at that stuff. Um, in the editor, uh, another thing I want to show. So uh, we've changed some stuff with the layout. Simulate is now kind of <laughs> we had all kinds of feedback. We had all kinds of feedback. This is, this is a very controversial change, but we had feedback over the oh, no. uh, for a while now. This thing has been over a year that like the play button doesn't look like play. Like yeah. pause looks like pause and stop looks like stop. But play didn't look like play because it, it was like a little Nintendo controller, right? Mm -hmm. I think I made the original icon for that years ago. Um, so we changed it so it actually looks like a play button. So play is play, and s now you can change kind of what mode you want to play in just using the drop down, similar to what you do with the launch toolbar. So if you want simulate, you can bring up simulate, and simulate will still work, uh, and that will default to simulate from now. Uh, so you're kind of changing what you do by default. Of course, you can create keybinds uh, for to go directly to whatever one you want, as you always could. Uh, but we've kind of consolidated the toolbar. And it's play is just always play. It's just a matter of whether you want to play as the player or play as kind of a floating editor tool. Um, so it's kind of a neat change. Um, other stuff going on the editor. <laughs> we had a long-standing uh, thing that we got feedback from you guys on. Basically, like certain names in the editor were claimed and you couldn't name them the way that you wanted to without the editor changing the capitalization of your words. <laughs> it drove a lot of people on the verge of insanity, I think. And we finally solved that for four or five. It was a deep architectural thing that has lasted since Unreal Engine 1. Um, and we finally have a, a solution now. So now uh, your asset names, your level names are all, uh, it will, they're all case preserving. So uh, you don't have to worry about the editor changing things on you. Uh, so I think that I, I know I love that change. So yeah. I know it seems like a little thing, but like it's seriously, if you're OCD like me, you will you might just go nuts uh, without it. So, um, okay, uh, let's see a few other things in the editor. Um, I'm not gonna open. Oh, I'm kind of terrified to open some of the stuff. Let's see. I'm not sure what project I'm dealing with here. Uh, I wanted to show Blueprint Editor though. Let's see if we yep. can open something. Uh, Sorry for my horrible lack of preparation here. Um, it's going to make a fake little blueprint. We can blame Dana and Chance. And <laughs> just say it's these little things, but Blueprint Editor has gotten a lot of polish. <clears throat> I would polish at every build, but like we've done little things, like we've made the graph nodes um, uh, make sense on a grid a little better. Like the lines always line up now, and the curves, in fact, actually curve nicer. Uh, so when you're looking at a big, complicated blueprint, um, things tend to make a little more. This is a little bit. Uh, a little bit more organized for the, again, the OCD people like me. Uh, things just match up. Even if you have different sizes. Programmers size, OCD? It, even, if, yeah, totally, even if you have like kind of different nodes of different sizes, the lines will match up. It's like these little things. But when you're going and working with someone else's blueprint, kind of like in, mm -hmm. in any kind of uh, programming language, helps if you can have things mm -hmm. kind of like just a you know, straight execution clean. line. Yeah, yeah, as clean as possible. And tools to help you, um, uh, empower you to create nice clean blueprints. Always good. We have other features in Blueprint Editor. The split pin feature is no longer experimental, so now um, you can split pins automatically uh, uh, just by right-clicking on them. Um, you know, there'll be all kinds of information about this in the release notes. Um, we now have more uh, functions exposed to Blueprints. You, we have like support for pausing, time dilation. Every build, we expose more Blueprints to functions, or more functions to Blueprints. Um, so that's just coming, more and more stuff there. The switch node has undergone a bunch of polish. I don't know if I can bring it up here. Uh, we have all kinds of switching stuff, um, so it's more contextual. Uh, just makes it easier. You can do more stuff, more things inline rather than having to make other nodes. Um, let's see what else can I talk about. Oh, this is one I'm really excited about too. So uh, a lot of the time, you, first, one of the first things you're doing when you're making your game is setting up input. Um, and oh, let me see get this project settings over here. Um, it's not much easier to set up input. We still have our action uh, mapping yeah. system, but like. It's really cool now. You can <laughs> to search. You can, things are categorized. <laughs> you can, oh, beautiful! Yeah. You can search for you know axes. Uh, some of the names make a little more sense now. Mm -hmm. um, nice icons on things. So just little things there, based off feedback, uh, trying to make simpler and faster for you guys. Um, so people want to make sure that you're still going to put these little Easter eggs in there, like my cat of the when he did this. And <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, okay. I know I'm going really long on this stuff, and we'll get to questions, yeah. but a few more cool things I want to talk about. I wish I could show more things, but it's kind of ad hoc here, uh, and it takes a while to show things, but talk about lots of things. 
uh, so platforms, we have more uh, support for Android, uh, more fringe devices, better compatibility, it's getting faster. Uh, Android's looking pretty damn good these days. We're working on deployment times, that's a big area of effort. Uh, so in 4.5 and then especially 4.6, we really want to make deployment times really fast um, so that you can iterate very quickly on devices. Um, so that's, we have a team that's just like looking really hard at how to make that super fast. Um, we have more features. Audio streaming is in now. Uh, it's still an experimental state, but you can create streaming background audio. Uh, I'll talk about some of the rendering stuff. This build has a ton of rendering features, so I can't really do it justice. I don't have the demo content here, but I think over the next few live streams, and also with the example content that we end up releasing, we'll be able to show off um, a lot of cool new rendering features. Awesome. Um, but I'll talk about them anyway, because they're still pretty cool. Uh, so we have OpenEXR support. So with this, this is kind of a more high-end feature, but basically you can save screenshots as OpenEXR format, which is basically what the film industry uses for compositing. You get, you save a, a, a HDR color buffer, uh, so full high dynamic range and you also get a depth map that the depth buffers in kind of like unreal units so this is very powerful now right because you can save out screenshots and then you can kind of in a, a professional tool like nuke you can composite them together and do interesting things for um, uh, linear content production uh, so it's something that and you know unreal engine we try to make it as accessible as possible but it has no upper bound on the high end that uh, we want to support so you'll see us adding more and more features for high-end development as well um, but we try to make it super easy so you can find that feature and just in the viewport um, any viewport you can click in oh gosh no oh you got this build yesterday okay never mind I can't show it in this build but <laughs> in your viewport toolbar you can click and then click save high-risk screenshot and it'll give you a little box where you can configure whether you want your alpha channel blah, blah, mm. like depth and all that stuff so uh, next thing, we have dynamic shadows on mobile in 4.5, wow. which is going to be awesome. Oh my gosh. Uh, so you have uh, cascaded shadow maps from, I think, at least directional lights on mobile with up to two cascades. So basically, really nice shadows if you turn them on. Obviously, they, they come with a per fit. Some devices, some Android devices might not support, support them. I don't know the, all, the exact compatibility. I think it will be part of the release notes, but we have shadows now. Um, uh, we have screen space subsurface scattering. Basically, this is skin shaders. Um, uh, so this has also been something that's been requested a lot. And, you know, we're trying to give you guys everything you need to make super realistic humans. So this will just be a long-term kind of effort as we add features like better skin shading, better hair, um, better dynamics on cloth. We want super realistic humans as part of our as part of our DNA to have that as something that our engine can do. And we've always done that even in Unreal Engine 3 and now in 4. So these features are coming in, um, and every, every release we'll probably see more of them. So uh, the new screen uh, subsurface scattering feature, you can just go into your, your material editor and um, there's a new uh, subsurface profile uh, box that you can click and it, you can customize it by creating a subsurface profile asset and that lets you configure things like how the light scatters through it, what color it becomes when it scatters through. Um, and then if you don't choose one, it defaults to, I think, a built-in one called human skin. Um, and then you can kind of just tweak that on your asset and it looks really cool. It looks a lot more realistic. Um, and it's cool, it's like conserving. It's not like what we did in UE3 for subsurface. Um, it doesn't make things brighter or darker. It's like, it's, it's, it's like real life. It's, like tech, it's just like what you see. I don't know how to explain it in technical terms. Um, cool, uh, okay, so two other things. So in, a pre in the previous release, we introduced an awesome feature um, that we're actually uh, using in some of our titles called uh, um, uh, Distance Field Ambient Occlusion, which uh, basically gives you really nice kind of uh, uh, soft, large-scale ambient occlusion for a dynamic world. So a world that, a world that you know, it doesn't require any, uh, 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 doesn't require everything in your world to be static. It means that things can be destroyed, things can move, and you still have really nice ambient occlusion. And this complements kind of the screen space ambient occlusion, which is like the, the fine grain ambient, ambient occlusion that you get uh, with the post-processing system. So the distance field ambient occlusion uh, kind of works by using uh, uh, an offline bake on your actual assets to create distance field maps. Distance field maps are like, if you imagine for every pixel, every unique pixel on your map, you stored um, uh, the positive or negative distance to the nearest occluder on that mesh. So it's like, where is the mesh occluding itself, right? And so we store that on every asset that you're gonna be drawing in your level. Um, and then this new uh, kind of novel uh, ambient occlusion system uses that for ray tracing, kind of uh, ray tracing uh, to the sky to figure out how, what's occluding what. So it gives you really nice kind of large, large scene ambient occlusion. The short version of that is it makes interior spaces dark when there's no light on, it, when it's mm -hmm. seamless. So, but it looks really good. Then, kind of like the next step of that, that's, it will be available in 4.5. So in 4.4 we had that feature and it's it's, it's improved for 4.5. Uh, it renders faster with higher quality. We the 
the distance field uh, distance field data gets generated in the background automatically by the editor, so you don't have to like do a bake as you're working. It will just get generated, so it's much improved. Awesome. And the meshes no longer do need to be like closed meshes. They don't need to be, they don't need to be watertight. It will work on on uh, your meshes however they are. And then, so for the new one, we have. Uh, uh, ray traced distance field soft shadows. So this feature is using the same sort of technology, but um, rather than ray tracing to the sky, we're doing ray tracing to a uh, light source. Uh, so this is cool because it gives you kind of real, really, really nice um, soft penumbra shadows uh, for your whole scene in a dynamic world uh, uh, with no baking required other than, um, other than the distance field data on your actual, actual assets. So very well suited for a, uh, a scene that can change a lot. And the results, I think when you see them, um, I think we're in the engine news form, we'll be posting uh, screenshots today with the engine news. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure that's going out today. But if not, it'll be going out soon. You'll see that stuff. Awesome. It's all in GitHub now anyway, so you can check it out if you want. Um, and that works with points, point lights, spotlights, directional lights. To use it, you have to turn on your project settings uh, uh, so that we know that you want to generate distance fields for all your assets. So there's a new project setting option. Um, I can find it, but it, you'll find it. It's, it's basically generate um, distance fields for assets. And then once that's on, on your light, you can flip it on with a new property calling, called cast distance field shadows, I think it's called. Um, and then you'll, you can start to try this out with your content. Gosh. Okay. That's pretty much all I had for the, some of the cool, awesome <laughs> new 4.5 features um, that were in, it's in final QA testing right now. So this stuff is coming soon. Um, and then the other thing I want to mention, we have uh, two new templates coming with 4.5. So these are the new project templates. Um, I'll just switch back to the editor here for a second. Uh, but basically we have in a new project, uh, you can see a twin stick shooter. Oh, awesome. Yep, so this is like kind of like your geometry wars kind mm -hmm. of thing, just shows how to make one of these. Um, and then we also have a new one that uh, I don't think, I think it's under C++ actually. Oh, I guess it's not on this machine, but. So I can't show it here, but it's basically an advanced vehicle template. Um, and it will show you how to make uh, a more fancy car with uh, a, a wishbone suspension, and the map has cool. like cool like loop de loops in it. It's like a pretty. It's more of like a awesome RC car cool. um, uh, vehicle demonstration. Uh, so that will be coming to you in 4.5. We hope. Uh, gosh, I think that's about it. Um, I could talk about kind that's of. That's a lot. That, I, 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 I know it's a lot. I don't know actually. Are we do, are we doing okay for time? I don't We're know. doing fine. Okay, I want to get to questions too. Uh, I saw there was a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. I can't answer all the questions, but I can try to answer <laughs> some of them. And Wes wants to show us something too. Oh yes, gosh, we should get that's that. Also coming in four or five. five. Okay, so let's show um, five two. Yeah, actually, you just take it away. Okay, and then if we have more time, then I'll talk about a few more things. Cool. There's so much good stuff right now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Everybody's really excited. So animation retargeting. Uh, currently, we have the ability to retarget animations to uh, the same skeleton. So if you have uh, uh, a mesh that's using the same skeleton, you can retarget animations between. Uh, uh, skeletons based on their proportions and things of that nature. Uh, we've been getting a lot of questions and requests for being able to transfer animations from different different skeletons. So uh, with this new system that Lena's been working on um, allows you to do so and it's really easy. Uh, I just found out about this on Monday and was able to take some of the uh, animation starter assets that are free on the marketplace and uh, mix them pack and put together a fully playable character using the uh, epic skeleton animations with the uh, Mixamo character. So Yeah, I came over and saw you working at your desk. I was like, yeah, it was pretty pretty doing? cool, pretty easy to put it together. Pretty so I have stuff. I no longer have the blue guy running around shooting stuff. I have awesome. a zombie in there and I have a bunch of different characters. Yeah, so this is awesome, Lena. Yeah, it's she's doing an uh, amazing job on it. I met with her the other day and talked about it and she has all these other plans and, and things to make it uh, the, the process a little bit uh, easier and I think it's pretty easy right now as it is and uh, I'm just going to Walk you through it really quickly and show awesome. you. Uh, yeah, this is cool. I actually haven't had this a tour of this yet, so. You guys are gonna like this. So we can uh, switch to the uh, screen here now. So what I did, I just started a new project, um, and I let's see, did we change the? Make sure we're still using the same character. Uh, where's my character at? I don't think I did any damage to it, at least not intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know. Okay, uh, oh, oh, it's on oh, simulate. Oh, no, you're in simulate. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. It's like, what's happening? Victims here? of our own UI changes. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So I have the animation starter pack guy in here. Uh, he has uh, a jog, he has crouch, he has prone, he has a bunch of different animations. And this is the epic skeleton. And I wanted to uh, use all these animations with a different character, a uh, different skeleton. Uh, you can easily do that now. Uh, if you go over to that skeleton, which is inside my animation starter pack here, 
and let's see, go into character, find the skeleton, and there it is. Uh, for the animation to be shared between skeletons, they need to use a new asset, uh, the rig. Uh, as long as two skeletons use the rig, they can pass animations between each other. So uh, all you do to create a rig is just find the skeleton, right-click on it, and there's some new context actions that you can take. Uh, right here, we're going to go ahead and create a new rig based off this skeleton. Uh, this window will pop up. This will allow you to choose which bones that you want to include in the rig. Um, I'm just going to leave it all as default for now. So I guess a rig is like a collection of bones that would be in common between multiple skeletons. Right, okay. right. Uh, so then I'll open up my skeleton and go to the retarget manager here. This is a new user this interface. This is a new yes. user interface here. Um, you do have the ability to, like I mentioned before, uh, retarget animations for uh, characters that use the same skeleton. That's the manage uh, retarget source here. Uh, and then we also have uh, two new options here, the setup rig, which we just did. I'm going to point this skeleton to use that rig. Uh, and then you'll see here, these windows are really big. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so when you point it to the rig, you can see uh, what you want to do now is point uh, on the rig the bones uh, that the skeleton uh, will use. And here, because we're using uh, the rig based off of that skeleton, all the bones are already automatically assigned. Um, nice. So you don't have to really do anything here. Uh, now we'll go to the skeleton that wants to use the animations from this uh, skeleton. So I'll go into the Mixamo character here. And let's say I want to pick... So any of these would work. Any of these right? would work, really, yeah. Nice. I'll just pick the SWAT guy because it has SWAT-like movements. Uh, go to that skeleton, open him up, and go into the retarget manager and just tell them to use that rig. Now, once you do that, uh, you'll see now it hasn't been populated. Um, you don't have to use the same hierarchy as what Lena told me, as long as the uh, skeletons are similar. Mm -hmm. um, you can go in and manually point. Uh, so like the pelvis from the epic skeleton, I can point that to the hips of wow. okay. this character, and then the spine. And there's, there's quite a few options in here that you would have to set. Uh, you can go down to individual fingers and, and things like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up another project real quick that I had already done that to because it's a bit time consuming to So the idea that. is that you don't have to have the exact same hierarchy, the exact same bone names. As long as they're bound to the same rig, yep. um, the engine can figure out how to retarget, how to map, and you have the flexibility of choosing bone for bone which ones get mapped to which. Yes. Okay. Cool. It's pretty incredible. Yep. <laughs> and it's, it's really easy, too, so you, you can use it for... Uh, like I said, any of those characters in there in that Mixamo pack or any other skeleton, uh, as long as they're sharing the same rig, you can pass animations between them. Uh, let's see, once I open this up, so let me bring this onto this monitor here. There we go. So let's go into Mixamo and the SWAT guy. Animations. And the skeleton. And we're also working on some documentation by where I'm, I'm saying me. <laughs> I'm working on <laughs> this documentation right now. I am working on a quick start guide for setting up a character, including the blend spaces animation, all that stuff, uh, using this uh, same process here. So you will have a breakdown of what all these bones are and how I set it up using the Mixamo packs. I know a lot of people have been asking, how can we get Mixamo characters to work with Epic Skeleton and retargeting? Uh, so I'll have a breakdown of documentation on that. But anyways, I already set this character up. I assigned all the bones. Um, as far as retargeting the animations, now all you would have to do is go to uh, the animation you want that the Epic Skeleton is using, pick any one, uh, right click on it, and you can retarget the animations for that character. Uh, let's duplicate it, and you'll see there's our Epic Skeleton on the left, and oh, cool. you can pick uh, which skeleton. I have multiple characters here because I kind of pre-set up this project, but all of these characters are using that rig now, so I can pick any one of these to transfer any of those animations to that character. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I'll pick so you get kind of a preview viewport here so you can make sure that it maps correctly. Yep, and all you do is hit select, and it creates a copy of it, uh, and it puts it in the same location as the skeleton, as it says here. Uh, let's see, can I open it? And there it is. Now nice. it's on wow. that character now. Uh, and when you are done, Sweet. you can end up with a fully playable character using all the animations from the starter pack. So awesome. And I just did this in like a day, half a day. 
And the other cool thing that I, I noticed too is that because the skeleton is using the rig and still using its skeleton, this zombie character here is using the Mixamo skeleton, but the rig that I set up. Mm -hmm. So it's playing its uh, animation that was assigned in the Mixamo pack, but I also assigned it a death animation as well that came with the animation starter pack, so I can shoot it and <laughs> die. So, awesome. And it's it's pretty easy for prototyping stuff like this. Like I said, I was tired of the blue man running around. I have all these animations in the starter pack there's like 50 animations and they're all free so you can get something up and running it's super empowering uh, to just be able to download anything like that and just yeah. get it hooked up super quick uh there's one more thing i wanted to show with the animation retargeting that lena showed me that's pretty helpful uh and again i'm working on documentation on the animation retargeting system itself so that should be coming soon uh one thing to note let's see let's open the vanguard i think it was so i have this skeleton here uh on another screen. I don't know if you're seeing it, so let me move it over. This skeleton here is not using uh, the traditional T pose, it's using an A pose. Mm -hmm. um, so if I were to, I've already set him up, I believe. Yeah, so I set him up. He is set to use the rig. So I can pass, technically, I can pass animations to him. So let's do that real quick. Uh, let's go in here. Let's pass a jog animation, like a jog forward. We have that. Yeah, so I'll pass this animation to that character and you'll see what happens here. Because it's using a different pose, you're gonna run into some issues and it even shows mm -hmm. you here in the preview. Right, yep. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it, you'll see what happens. Copy the animation over. You'll notice that his arms <laughs> yeah, he's are forced kinda, for kinda ugly there. <laughs> so yeah. We can easily fix that by adjusting, retargeting the, the base pose of this character and that will fix this uh, issue. And you can do that inside the retarget manager there as well. You just go down to the uh, manage retarget base pose option here. You can view what its current pose is uh, and then manually change the you pose can just here. Move. Yep. Oh, awesome. So wow. You can just move the joint right here. Yep. I don't want to move that. I want to move his actual arm. I can't see. I'm blind. <laughs> so I kick on his shoulder and move that up to somewhat of a T pose. <laughs> yeah, I'm blind. I can't see this. You're just too far away. <laughs> I'm not clicking on it. You got it already. There it is. Oh. Yeah. Nice. So now it's a little bit better in a T pose. I can make it even better if I wanted, but that's what I do. And then I save the pose. Uh, you can view the pose now. That's my new retargeted base oh, pose. Nice. So now if I go in and retarget this animation again, and I choose my Vanguard guy. You can see that the pose is now, yep. they're both in the T pose, so that should fix some of the issues. Gosh, that's really cool. And I open it up. And now it's a little bit better. There's some things I can do as well to, to even tweak it a little bit more by adjusting some settings on the skeleton, mm -hmm. but you can see it's already in a vast improvement than mm -hmm. what it was before. Uh, and that's for any pose that your character's in. You can easily change that and retarget the base pose uh, to pass the animations on. So some really cool stuff that, that I'm pretty excited about. The interface is something that Lena said that she wants to improve the uh, signing of the bones, and her and I talked about that, and there's some cool things that she wants to try out and, and maybe get in there. So, uh, yeah, that that's pretty much the, the future, and uh, it's, it's pretty pretty, pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Any idea when the documentation not uh, No pressure. <laughs> it's actually done. It's in review right now. Uh, okay, so awesome. I want Lena to look because it over and, and uh, some of the other guys on the documentation team to re review it, and hopefully it will co come in the same time that the uh, character quick start, uh, character movement guide that I'm working on comes out. So when those come together, you'll be able to set up a character, blend spaces and all, awesome. and, and all that stuff, and uh, also give it a, a new model and a new skeleton uh, with this as well. I think uh, at the least you'll have um, the minimal documentation that Lena wrote mm -hmm. uh, when she gave it to the technical artists here and the animators here um, as part of the 4.5 release notes, which are okay. coming as fast as we yeah. get them done. We're working on them right now. So okay, cool. They'll be on the website soon. Cool, cool. Okay. All right, are you ready for questions? questions? <laughs> oh, I mean, sure, let's do it. Okay. We got? I mean, I'll answer what I can. We'll see what yeah, we, we can we do. Yeah, we have quite a few questions, so we may not be able to get through everything if we can't ask your question again next week or post on the forums. And um, some of the guys were jumping in this thread and answering some questions. So um, Chariots wants to know if there's any news on the Nav NavMesh stre uh, streaming level support. It would be a huge boost to large worlds. Sure. Yep, so we're working on that right now. In fact, I think that a version of that will be in 4.5. Oh, really? Um, we were talking about it just last week. We actually had a large world summit here at Epic where we had um, 
uh, our teams from Korea who worked on uh, a lot of the world browser technology um, and uh, other people who are interested in large worlds and we, t we basically sort of figured out what our plan for you know improving the state of large worlds in UE4 is going forward and Excellent. streaming nav mesh is like it's it's coming real soon if it's not in there already Excellent. so yeah if it's not 4.5 it will be 4.6. Uh, Gorm has a question about Hot Reload 2.0. He has one plugin, um, in fact, the TrueCut Sky plugin integrated into UE4. With 4.4, he was unable to use the Hot Reload no matter how small the change was. Um, is that because of the plugin, and will it be possible in 4.5? Um, it's hard to say exactly. It sounds like more like a bug report uh, thing there, but plugins won't, won't disrupt. Oh, okay. They so should, should not disrupt Hot Reload. A problem. Uh, after trying it with 4.5, yeah. I, I don't expect anything like that, but it's still a new feature, so we'll see. Um, but I certainly keep plugins loaded, and like I said, I work seems to work pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll get it there if it's not. Um, Tom said that he was really looking forward to 4.5 and animation retargeting. Um, Hot Reload did not work on constructors in 4.4. Uh, that should be fixed now. And so 4.5 will should support constructor Hot Reload too. That was a that's a it's a, a kind of a tricky one. Um, so constructors constructors for U objects definitely work. Uh, we want everything, like I said, everything to be reloaded. Uh, so that's the goal. Um, so if it doesn't work, then it's a bug. Uh, but um, we've been working hard on finding and fixing all those cases that we couldn't catch. So hopefully okay. it should be good. Um, Riach cannot wait for this update. He said, <laughs> "There's uh, oh, I'm sorry, yep. There's a lot of people wondering if and when there, we are planning on improving foliage lighting. Oh, um, OK. So this is something that is also important to us. And we had, like I said, we had a large world summit last week, and this came up there as well. So we're working right now on static lighting for foliage awesome. uh, and getting that improved. So that was a lot of questions. Yep. Over the uh, so that should be coming, I believe, within a week. Um, so it won't make 4.5, unfortunately, but it'll be in GitHub. And what we can do, um, if it's that high demand, what we'll do is we can post uh, the change list required to get it working that can be merged on GitHub to a 4.5 branch. Awesome. Uh, so you can basically cherry pick uh, those the static lighting for foliage from 4.6 into 4.5 stable release, and I mean that's normally what we would do in that situation. You just made everyone's day too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. We're working on this stuff. <laughs> yeah, like it's 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 almost ready. So cool. uh, yeah. stuff. will will we be able to deploy? This is from Sinu. Uh, will we be able to deploy to iOS from a binary UE4 build launcher in 4.5? Yes, I think that that's supported. Yep. Awesome. And um, in fact. I didn't mention this. <laughs> uh, I can't pr promise it, but it's in testing right now. And barring no QA blockers, you should be able to deploy to a web browser in 5 as well oh, with goodness. the binary release. We want actual HTML5 support from the binary version 2. So one click. That's good to yeah. cool. So that's, that's, yeah, we'll see. If Q <laughs> QA might kick it out uh, if they find some showstoppers with it. But, but it is coming. It's coming as soon as we can get it to you guys. Yep. Um, Demolition Man says, thank you so much for another outstanding update. And, oh, actually, this was already answered. Could you use that uh, for retargeting? Could you use that to map Mixamo Fuse characters to Epic's Hero Skeleton or vice versa? Uh, yeah, I so, think yeah. we just, just have to <laughs> show that that's possible. Yeah. 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 HTML5 deploy being ironed out. We just talked about that. Uh, will we get realistic water support in UE 4.5? This is something we're having. Um, it, it, sort of, it sort of depends on... There's so many different ways to do water. Water is a really big and complicated one. And just getting, like, mm -hmm. as you guys know, probably if you've looked at different implementations of water, just adding a water plane with cool reflections is not really, that's just like <laughs> yeah. the 1%, right? right? And it's like kind of how do you do with refraction? How do you do with shorelines? How do you do with water simulate, like physical buoyancy and all that stuff? It's like, it's actually kind of like a, this project of its own, this kind of living <laughs> multi-year. So, so it's something that we obviously want to have first class support for you to be able to do really cool physically physical water surfaces in the engine. So we're having discussions about it. In fact, like there's email threads going today, and we pay attention to all the form posts about that. So I don't have any ETAs, but all I can say is that, yes, we we're want it. And we're talking about different techniques we could use. Um, so it's kind of just ongoing research for us yet. Right. It's, not gonna, it's not going to appear in the next few versions, um, but uh, you know, we'll keep looking at it. Yep. And there's a lot of this on the stream as well, Viramix. Hello, he's, I've known him for a while. Cool. Um, uh, we, he just wants to know about the Linux editor. Is that going to make it into 4.5? Uh, no, it's not yet. It's well, he said, please say yes. So you did the right <laughs> thing already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not quite ready yet. Yeah. Um, it's I mean, a lot of work. 
Well, so it's uh, Dimitri uh, Reckman uh, has been working with the community, and the community's done a tremendous amount of work on this, uh, and we appreciate them so much. Really awesome. Uh, I don't think it would exist without them. So big props to those guys. Yes. Um, with UT too. Yep, uh, and and uh, we're seeing um, uh, even commercial users uh, pick up the Linux editor and find uses for it, uh, even in the state that it's in right now, just you building it yourself from source. Right. So uh, we're hoping that people help, help us by contributing back. Um, you know, the Linux editor hasn't yet sustained the battery of QA testing that we would put for, through the Mac editor, the Windows editor, Mac editor. So I have a feeling that once we really put it through that, well, that's when we can finally say that it's supported. It. Um, but there's still a lot more testing and a lot more fixing to be done. Um, so I mean, as soon as we can, we care about it a lot, and Dimitri's working hard yeah, on it. Yeah, there's a lot of Linux so, here. Yep. Yeah, so we'll get it there, but not yet. Uh, what's new with UMG? I think we covered most, most of that of stuff that. already. Yeah. I think probably in the next, maybe next stream, we can do a demo showing even the latest features. And, <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. You know, we'll, we'll figure it out. I think documentation can use some updating too, based on all the new stuff that he's talking about. So we'll, we'll look to okay. get that out too. Yep. And CG Rebuild. I hope that's right. Who asked that? Also, let's know how Shooter Game Xbox One certification is going. Oh, Process. I actually don't have the update on that. Um, I know it's still in flight, or like we're still working on it. Um, I don't have an update, unfortunately, um, but maybe we can get one. Well, you you talked about this one as too. This is from 3D Light regarding regarding forward rendering. I've seen better skin shaders in the works. Um, will it make it into 4.5? Yep. Yes, it has. Yeah. So, and it's still. Uh, being worked on, Martin Mitring uh, has been working on it. So, you know, it's not try it out, send feedback, send pictures, and you know, maybe we'll just That's keep working fun. on it, make it better. So. Uh, Charleston S has a few questions here. Uh, will we finally get a real time GI and fully functional emissive lighting, or at the very least, static <laughs> emissive lighting support as we had in the UV? Uh Static <laughs> emissive lighting. I do not have an answer on the emissive lighting one because I don't actually, I'm not familiar with the problem with that, or I'm not familiar with what's, miss what's missing from UV4 there, but. Um, the fully dynamic GI stuff. Wow, that's a mm. loaded one. It's something that I Very mean. Loaded. <laughs> there's, there's, we're talking about things. I'll say that much, right? We're trying to figure something out. We obviously want that. Um, uh, you know, we have the implementation of uh, uh, Lionhead's uh, uh, awesome GI already in there, and we, we're expecting to take further improvements to that. Um, and of course, the light mass static GI, the fully dynamic GI, is still something that you know. We get requests all the time. You know, we were asked last, you know, last week, can we release a source to Spogey? It's something that's always uh, uh, interesting to the community if we can do that. Uh, so I don't know. We're talking about it all the time. We'll figure something out. Um, well, but he's, he's asked a few questions about lighting and stuff like that, and about hair, and you've you've mm -hmm. covered that. Yep. Um, I'll just move down to: uh, Can we expect an out of the box video file support with 4.5? Video support, uh, like like dumping movies, I guess. Hmm. Oh, or playing back Video movie textures, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we he, have he compared it to the one that we had in UE3, so I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I see. We do have a streaming system that is new in 4.5. I actually forgot to talk about that, too. So we have a, a media framework, it's called, which is a sort of platform agnostic media uh, 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 video playback system. Uh, I don't know what if it's like ready, ready for 4.5. I have to check with uh, Max Pressner, who wrote it. Um, but it's in there. We're working on it. Um, if it's not ready for 4.5, it's coming soon. We awesome. definitely obviously care about um, uh, video, like general movie yeah. playback and movie textures. Uh, of course, we have like loading movie support. We can play, you know, mm -hmm. in a right. p conditionally per platform, we can play loading movies and whatnot, but we want general movie support, and it, it's coming with the media framework. Um, so I'll have to, I think by the time we get the release notes done, we'll know. So maybe within the next few days, um, hopefully there'll be information in there about that. ES would like to know, what about blended root motion? Oh, gosh. Do you know about that, Wes? I don't, actually. That's something I'd have to take up with Lena. I'm not not quite sure. Okay. No, I don't have an update. Right. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll get with Lena. I've seen a couple of questions asking about that. So I don't know. Uh, we talk about it a lot, so it's, like, it's definitely on our radar. <laughs> not sure when it's coming. Uh, Tommy Bear says, I would, like, I, I would like to see some talk about the future of terrain engine and authoring terrain in general. Um, I mean, his ideal would be that Epic introduced node-based terrain authoring. Oh, interesting. Okay, so like um, procedure, like parametric um, uh, world generation stuff, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, that stuff is interesting to us. Um, we would like that too. Whatever helps you uh, prototype levels or get worlds together faster, and um, so that that to us is definitely on the roadmap. That's something that we we care about a lot. Um, 
maybe you'll hear more about it soon. I, don't know. I'm, I can't really say much yet, but um, it's, we love to talk about it, so it's just kind of... We'll Quick, br Quick Brown Fox would, said, I saw in one of the Trellos that Xbone rendering got a pretty good boost from some changes. Xbox Does this one. apply <laughs> to every other platform as well? Uh, I'm sorry. What, what did, did, I just, did I really just say yeah, that? You, yes, you did. <laughs> I thought it was a new feature or something that I wasn't aware of. Yeah. <laughs> the question was, was it, oh was, it, was it written as that way? He, he did write Xbox. Oh, okay. I okay. did not just pull that one out. <laughs> it was Xbox One care. rendering got a pretty good boost from some changes. Does this apply to every other platform as well? I'm going to get you for that we, one. There's, uh, when you, you'll see in the full release notes, we have a ginormous list of rendering. There's all kinds of performance well, optimization. Well, he, he asked so. if there are other uh, speed yeah. performances and, uh, as Both well. So. PlayStation, Xbox One, we have all kinds of improvements. Yeah, so. I mean, there's a lot of things, too. A lot of micro changes we make, especially when it comes to the performance, um, diagnostics, kind of the, the deeper dark corners of the editing mm -hmm. tools and the cooking and polishing process. I don't showcase these on, when we're talking about those here because they're, they're, they're things that you, know, you might not use on a day-to-day -day basis, but we're working on that stuff like crazy all the time, awesome. especially the platform stuff. Yeah. Uh, is there a way to deproject widget based on world position? Uh, oh, deproject a widget position from world space? He said he had some success with using it in Slate, mm -hmm. um, but it, it didn't really work well. Not sure. Well, the widget was indeed that. updated every frame. The problem was that it gathered all damage numbers from all affected actors and is played in a single space instead of for each actor. <laughs> okay, very specific. Does that help? I think, <laughs> I, I think we're going to need the UI team. Oh, okay. That, right? yeah. It's too specific. All right. So, MC Striker has a few questions. Have there been any improvements to translucent materials? Um, nothing for 4.5 that I'm aware of, but could be wrong. I mean, we have subsurface. You could look at that as translucency, yeah. but I know there's requests for better translucency on foliage, um, better translucency in general. I would agree that we have work to do there. Um, and I know the rendering team is passionate about it, so. Yeah. But I, I don't remember anything from them in 4.5, but I mean, this is an area that we want to have the best rendering, real-time rendering in the world, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just, we'll get there. Yeah. Okay. It's an order, order of operations thing. Is Epic planning on integrating NVIDIA's VR Direct SLI in the future? I don't know, actually. Actually, I don't know what that is, Direct SLI. Uh, let's see here. Here's a quote about VR Direct. Developers can use SLI to assign multiple GPUs to each eye. Wow. And oh, cool. a feature called Asynchronous Warp lat reduces latency by half. So. I'm sure we will support it. Nick, oh, or oh, Nick cool. Whiting's all about every little <laughs> VR thing we yes, can get. Yes, he is. So <laughs> we, both we'll Nick's actually. Yes, we'll remain on the cutting edge of VR, so I'm sure they're on top of it. Another NVIDIA question, will developers be able to take advantage of NVIDIA's v VXGI implementation? Um, we don't know yet, uh, but we would love that. If, or I would certainly love sure. that. Um, but we don't know yet NVIDIA's plan to make that available, or I don't. Um, so uh, we'll see. We'll see We're how that works. working really closely with NVIDIA. So. Yeah, I, would, I think that would be awesome. So. Uh, any gr upgrades to VR support in regards to DK2? Uh, I'm sure there's changes. I don't. I don't have the list though with me. I don't know. Nick. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure we. I mean, we just did the presentation at Oculus yeah. Connect yeah. For, uh, with the Crescent Bay well, hardware. We have a video on the site too. Gosh, yeah. I'm sure yeah. we've made changes. Uh, Has LPV been improved for this release? Um, I don't know if we took. So we're working with Lionhead on it. Uh, they have um, a batch of improvements. I know that we would like those improvements. I don't know for 4.5 if we've took the integration from them, um, but you can certainly bet that we want that. Um, so we'll find out when the release notes come out. I don't have an update. Okay. Yeah. Uh, w Code asks, when will we see improvements to the physics, Apex, Destructibles, and Editor? Uh, the Destructibles Editor? Oh, uh, might be a little while still. It's not the highest priority thing on our list to work on the destructible tools. Um, I guess I don't have an update for you. I mean, we recognize the problems with it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, have, I don't have an update yet. Okay. It's just not the next things on the priority stack. Like you, as you can see, there's a million things we <laughs> want to do. Want to tackle, yeah. um, it's one of those cases where the tools are past the threshold of good enough, and it's not kind of like the next tool that's in the line of hire mm -hmm. for improvement. Um, but yeah, we won't, don't want to leave it like that for long if it's clunky, so we'll get back to it. Yeah, he said he had problems making a choppable tree. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had some problems with it too. But. <laughs> uh, when will users be able to sell plugins on the marketplace? Good question. Yeah, question. This is something, again, very near and dear to my heart since mm -hmm. I wrote the plugin system. Um, I would 
love for that to be available this year. I think that um, if we can, we'll, we'll have it them on the marketplace before the end of year. There's not really a big technical limitation. As you see, like, I mean, we have plugin support. Uh, some of our partners are already distributing plugins, and we see people on the forums uh, mm -hmm. sharing features that way. Mm -hmm. Totally cool. That's awesome. We, we never really had the plugin system quite finished, and uh, I admit I thought we would have it ready a lot sooner, but, I mean, it works, and I think kind of as it is will be the way that it's it's mostly released. So I expect that the way that you're used to making plugins right now will be yeah. kind of the way to make plugins. Um, but we have some interesting changes coming uh, uh, in that area uh, as the mar marketplace matures. So it will probably change a bit, um, hopefully this year. Uh, I really want to see them on there. We're just kind of working out the, the workflow processes for them. We want to make sure that, you know, um, when you're creating a code plugin, um, uh, you have every opportunity to keep it up to date with as we release new engine versions and new preview mm -hmm. versions. We don't want to have like um, we Epic pops out a new version and invalidates all yeah. all code based plugins on the marketplace because of binary incompatibility changes. So we're looking at what we can do there, just creating best practices to make sure that um, uh, that ends up being a successful uh, for all of the great people ma making extensions to the tools. So um, yeah, so I think that. It's kind of a status update, I guess. Yeah. As soon as I could, <laughs> if I could get them on there like next month, I would. Um, so we'll, be we'll awesome. see. Uh, for the planned official video as texture support in 4.5, will it be able to use alpha channels and blending to make parts of it transparent? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I actually <laughs> haven't seen that with my own eyes yet. So. Sorry, Sharpfish. And, and in fact, Forums. I don't know if it's in 4.5. It was probably on the Trello, but um, I know we have the media framework. I don't know if it does video textures yet. Has progress been made on screen space reflections in VR? In VR? Uh, For Oculus Rift? Not sure yet. Okay. Or, uh, I don't know. I don't have an update on that. Not sure. And one last question from Osman. Uh, while I think the current retargeting system is good enough for my current needs, I was wondering, are there any plans to implement a system similar to Mechanum? Mechanum. Mechanum, uh, where, where it would be more flexible to different skeletons as long as the definition is humanoid like. I yeah. think, yeah, I think yeah. that's, that was the purpose of this, uh, getting your guys' feedback. I think that was part He's of this very purpose. Happy so, right now. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why I think that system is really, uh, it's really exciting to be able to do, pass so, animations to you know, any, any skeleton as long uh, as they're uh, relatively <clears throat> similar. So, I think that. Um, um, what he's asking for, though, is the general purpose case, which Lena calls this phase one of retargeting. Yeah. Um, and I know, uh, I don't know how many phases she has, hopefully, I think just two. <laughs> but the, kind of the, the next step, I know that she cares very deeply about yes. uh, uh, the general purpose retargeting so that you can go between skeletons that aren't necessarily related, and mm -hmm. we can do that rebinding. So uh, I don't know when which version yeah, that's when, coming, when that's but coming. it's an active area of development. If, if, if it was, makes 4.6, it makes 4.6. Otherwise, you know, hopefully we'll see it this year. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, we want to get that going for sure. Okay, if you have any questions, you can head out over to the forums at uh, forums.unrealengine.com. Uh, go to unrealengine.com to look at uh, the VR video with Nick and Nick, and also the uh, marketplace updates are also on Unreal Engine. Oh, I thought of one thing I wanted to say. And Mike okay. has one more thing. <laughs> I, I totally forgot. I was going to say this at the beginning, but uh, <laughs> somebody just said, "Are you sure Mike doesn't have anything else?" <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like uh, for 4.5, we had over 40 uh, feature and bug fix contributions from the community, and I just oh want to say God. thanks. Or like over Thank 40, you. I think like, that's I think the most that we've had yet uh, for one release, and they're getting higher and higher quality and more expansive and and uh, gener generally useful. And we still have a bunch. Actually, I think that we're the bottleneck now, um, our review process. <laughs> yeah. So we have a whole lot <laughs> pending in flight. Like if we could get them all merged in uh, as fast as they're submitted and reviewed, then we have a lot more. So I just want to say thanks for that and. Uh, and the, the talent out there is just absolutely amazing. Yeah, so some of the things that we're seeing that come across our, our email are just like, super <laughs> awesome. We have over four thousand forks on GitHub. We're catching up to the Linux kernel. And we're, not, <laughs> wow. and we're not even like you know really open source or a closed community of open code, but that's like that's really cool. Four thousand forks. So I just want to say thanks. Thank cool. you and keep Thank it coming. Thank you guys. Keep it up. We really do appreciate it because we we just like I said every day we just look at things that even over an Unreal tournament that people are submitting and sending to us and it's just it's awesome right it's yeah. incredible. I, I, I get an email whenever a pull request comes in and I just like makes me smile every time. <laughs> so Love thank it. you everyone yep. and make sure you join us next week at the same time two o'clock and Dana and Chance should be back unless they're off in some other far off land <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>